Nice. So let's do it. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you to the organizer for allowing me to be here. As you can see, my name is Anthony Salcedo Prudencio. I belong to the Molecular Biology Laboratory at National University of San Marcos in Lima, Peru. And today I'm going to be talking about our latest project, which the title is First Ensayo of Phylogeographic Relationships and Genetic Diversity of the Desert Landscape, but Prospectus. So let's move on. So first of all, what is Botrospectus? Um, described for the first time by Johann Jacob von Schuri in 1845, and commonly referred to as Desert Landscape, Botrospectus is a neotropical medical important pit viper endemic to Peru. And it is usually found in the western slope of the Andes, the coastal foothills and river valleys along the central to the northern Pacific coast in Peru, you can see. Butterspictus belongs to the family Viperidae and the family Cardalini. And also, Butterspictus belongs to the species complex called Botrox complex, which you have here. And it is characterized by its taxonomic instability. And it used to comprise six genus, as you can see here. The first one is Rhinocerophis, Botropoides, Botryopsis and Botrocopias. But now there are only two genus, Botrops and Botrocopias. It's worth mentioning that Botrops complex sensu stricto, it uh, consists in Jaracusa group and Natus group. And recently they were synonymized, Botropoides, Botropsis, and Rhinocerophis were synonymized with Botrops. That is why uh, now Botrops complex consists just only uh, Botrops and Botrocopias. So here you have Botrops pictus in the Botrops complex. But what is the problem with Botrops pictus? Firstly, the lack of comparative material and tissues, because uh, as a result of this, till the day there are only two gene fragment sequences uploaded on gene bank from Buster et al. 2002 work. Uh, apart from that, Botrospectus remains in 30 cities. In other words, its phylogenetic affinities remain unclear, as you can see in this uh, phylogeny. Botrospectus uh, does not belong to any of these groups of the Botrus complex. Uh, what is more, in other phylogenies, you can see the same. But respect to the nobula to any of these groups. So, um, latest studies suggest Botrospectus is a sister group of all Botrops, forming a clade and containing only Botrospectus, as you can see in Hadman, Hamdan phylogenies. But of course, there's no uh, phylogenetic affinity again. Um, all of these phylogenies show Botrospectus without phylogenetic affinities or as an isolated species, like in this case and in this case. So uh, till today, all the available phylogenies containing Botrospectus are based on the same gene fragment sequences from both their works. And maybe that is why they got the same result because there's no uh, phylogenetic affinity in case of Botrospectus. So in order to clarify the phylogenetic position of Botrospectus, we sampled 10 specimens of Botrospectus, and then uh, we extracted the DNA with a DNA kit, a commercial DNA kit, and then we amplified two mitochondrial gene fragments, cytochrome B or cyte B, and cytochrome oxidase subunit one or code one by PCR reactions. And then we sequenced and purified the amplicons. Afterwards, we perform a phylogenetic analysis. First of all, uh, we downloaded DNA sequences from other species of Botrops, Botrops sensulato and sensu stricto, and from different genus of Viperity. And then we align the sequences using ClustalX, which is a software for alignment. And subsequently, we perform maximum likelihood analysis and Bayesian inference. And here you have our results. 
On the left side, you can see our maximum likelihood tree. And don't be panic, just have a look on this part. As you can see here, Botrus pictus is closely related to Botrocopias. And in this case, we got a phylogenetic affinity. You're frozen. So we'll just give okay. you a sec there, you're back. Oh, okay. So can so you we hear missed, me? We missed about 15, 10 seconds. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, we got the phylogenetic affinity with Botrocopias, which is not Botro sensu stricto. And we got the same result in case of Bayesian and inference three. So uh, in comparison to the other phylogenies by Carrasco, uh, by Hamna, we got a phylogenetic affinity and it's supported with 69 values of bootstrap and 0.57 of posterior probability. probability. So uh, what's next? Was there an early divergence of a common system between botrospectus and botrocopias? That's the next question. Of course, there's an ancestor, there's a common system between botrospectus and botrocopias. And as you can see here, and we realized that uh, between botrospectus population and botrocopias population in our country, there was a physical barrier in this case, the Andes mountain range. So maybe there was an early divergence, right? So in order to answer that question, we perform uh, and we calculate the diversity measures and the GMSD using DNA SP. And what we got was high values of haplotide diversity and nucleotide diversity for both gene fragments. What is more, uh, regarding the GMS neutrality test that we performed, we got a minus 0.37 for COI and minus 0.51 for Psi B. Also indicates a non significant size of rare mutations in the populations, suggesting they have mutated randomly through genetic brief, which could be related to the Andean uplift course. So, to conclude, Botrus pictus is closely related to Botrocopias instead of Botrus sensu stricto, with a moderate to low posterior and booster support of 0.57 and 69, respectively. The results suggest a very important divergence between haplotides or a secondary contact between differentiated populations and high values of P, of in this case, uh, nucleotide diversity. Indicate deep genetic divergences between populations accumulated in isolation over a long period of time. This results also suggest an early divergence affected by historical recurrence, presumably happening during early miocene due to, uh, due to uh, Indian uplift. Regarding the GMSD result, there's no significance of, of rare mutations, as I said before, in the populations suggesting they have mutated randomly through genetic drift. These are my references uh, regarding the knowledge mess, thanks to all my team lab, especially thanks uh, to my professor and incredible scientist, Dan Vivas Ruiz and Cesar Aguilar Puntiano. That's all for me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Again, very much on time. And we have a question in the room for you. Okay. Tell me. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. It was very inspiring. But oh, really? my, my question with, with this kind of studies is always, why do you think that your phylogenetic you are proposing is more accurate than previous ones? Okay, um, in this case, uh, we don't know, we are just inferring, but in this case, it's a different approach because we are using new gene fragments because all the previous studies uh, use the same gene fragments from Worcester's work that are from 2002. But in our case, uh, think, thanks to, uh, to new, uh, new comparative material, new tissue samples, uh, and so on, we got new gene fragments. Uh, we use only uh, cytochrome B for that uh, analysis. So we infer uh, 
this type of tree, but we are not sure if it's better or not, but it's with new data, new sequences, so maybe it could be. What is more, uh, we use uh, different algorithms to calculate these, these trees and so on. So maybe it's better. <laughs> Have you tried to, to use three different other pieces of the gen genome the sequences to see if you converge in the same phylogeny or if you find further uh, diversity of, of phylogenies? Because if it is just evolving by, by genetic drift, could be that it is uh, that you recover quite different things with, uh, with different materials. So at the end, it should be the whole genome or at least the mitochondrial genome, but this comes only from the mother and, and, and so on. So uh, I, I, I don't know what, what is the, 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 the validity of, of the study, if it can change and, uh, from, from with different studies. Yeah, you are right. It would be better if we got the genome, the complete genome or mitochondrial genome. Maybe it would be more accurate of phylogeny inference, maybe. Uh, we can do it, of course, in the future. <laughs> but for this time, we only use uh, one gene, in this case, cytochrome B, for the phylogenetic analysis. Okay, are there, there's another question in the room. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, hi, Anthony. Thank you very much um, for speaking and congratulations on the work as well. Um, I did phylogenetics for my master's and I think I remember wanting to chew my legs off at some point. Anyway, um, I wanted to just ask you out of interest um, on um, the samples you use. Um, can I just ask out of interest, were they museum specimens or were they live court specimens? And out of interest, what uh, tissue? where did you take your tissue samples from? Uh, in this case, we use skin tissue samples. Uh, we collected from different locations here in Peru because we got uh, a place where we got uh, the snakes and we take care of them. Um, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you very much um, and good luck with the rest of the work. Thank you. I think there might have been a question online. Is there someone online that wanted to ask a question and unmute? Or maybe that was an accidental unmuting. Maybe, we don't know. Yep, one more in the room. Okay, nice. Hello, this is Ulrich Kuch uh, from Frankfurt, Germany. Um, I'm interested to know whether you found uh, Botrops Rödingeri recently and uh, if, if that was included in your analysis. Uh, as I remember the last time we talked about these snakes, um, Botrops pictus and Botrops rodingeri, they had always been suspected to be the same species, or some people said they are different species, both living on the coastal areas of Peru. Did you include the species, or did you find out anything new about, about it? Sorry, I got lost. Can you say it again, please? Botrops, Botrops rodingeri, that is uh, the other coastal uh, dwelling um, Botrops pit viper that, uh, that you have in Peru. Yeah, it's quite a lookalike to a Botrops pictus. Uh, did you find it and uh, did you include it in your analysis? Yeah, we included that in our analysis. So how did it come out? Is it uh, really a close relative to Botrops, Botrops pictus or not? Which one? <laughs> Sorry. Botrops, Botrops rodingeri. Ah, rodingeri. Yes, oh, exactly. I got it, I got it. Yeah, uh, in this case, we got only uh, specimens of Botrus pictus, but maybe it's related, of course, because uh, the researchers often confuse Botrus rodingeria and Botrus pictus. Uh, maybe that would be the next step of our investigation, maybe to clear this phylogenetic relationship between Botrus rodingeri and Botrus pictus. But uh, Botrus rodingeri is often considered as Botrus pictus uh, as well. Yeah, it's an exciting, exciting question. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, cool. thank you so much, Anthony. We're going to move on to the next talk now.